Welcome to the Finest Women in Real Estate TV Talk Show. I am so excited today to have some topics that are relevant to every person in business. We're going to discuss business etiquette, the value of being on television and how it can support your business. And I'm your host, Lindell Worling. I'm so excited to have Elaine Swan with us today. Elaine has just a fascinating journey of leveraging social media and television and bringing her expertise, which is business and lifestyle etiquette, to our viewing audience. Elaine, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome, glad to be here. I'm so excited. We are all dying to know how you have gone through your journey and how you've been on so many talk shows and been on a reality show and how you've made that journey from when you figured out you wanted to do it to how you became so successful. Could you share with us a little bit about how that all unfolded for you? Yeah, sure. So in my profession, I'm an etiquette expert and I had been teaching and researching and coaching and sharing and having, you know, hosting etiquette classes and workshops and traveling the country speaking and by accident one day I was invited to uh, become a guest on NBC in San Diego and uh, I didn't really understand what it was they wanted I was in San Diego for another project uh, auditioning there and one of the producers saw me or heard me actually and said hey we'd love for you to come on and talk about cell phone etiquette and I said okay sure so I did I went on and I shared my advice and I thought, wait a minute, this is something, you know, when I, after that segment aired, the attention that I got from just the local community was phenomenal. And I thought, okay, I've got something here. So I knew that this was a great way to definitely reach as many people as possible. And then the great thing about it was to be, if you're a guest and you're being interviewed, then you can do that for free. So I figured out, okay. Television is very, very powerful. How can I make this happen more? Because I'm like, I want more of this now. Absolutely. You know? So what I did is I started going to workshops, uh, conferences. I joined journalist organizations. I took courses and classes. And I did everything I could to try to figure out how to get more of what I had gotten before, which was to get on television. And from there... I learned how to be a stalker. <laughs> and when I say stalker, that's literally what I had to do was literally stalk producers and tr t send to them, you know, ad uh, my etiquette advice or tips that I would share. And it really, really worked out well because I started out local and I would watch the news and I would see what was going on and think about how my brand and my message fit into what was being said. And I would send pitches to the producers and they booked me for the shows. And after a while I thought, okay, this is good for local. Now I'm ready to go national. Oh, big time. <laughs> I did, yeah. And so I started going after some of the national shows and the first one that actually booked me after two years of trying. I mean, it took me a while to kind of figure out what they were looking for and how to do it. Now it doesn't take, as, it, that time frame is not as long. But it took me two years to get booked on the Today Show. And once I got booked on that show, it was incredible. And I think what folks don't necessarily realize is television is very, very powerful. And it's not just for big brands that can purchase commercial time and things like that. If you think about it, the local news station, they have sometimes in the morning four or five or even six hours worth of news that they need to fill up. Well, they tell the same news stories over and over and over again. But in between, a lot of times, if you look at it, they'll have guests and they'll have expert guests. And so producers want expert guests to come on and share information that would help with the, help the viewers and, and make their lives easy. Sure, interesting content that you can't get somewhere else. But like to your point, from somebody who's very polished, somebody that has information that is valuable for the viewer to invest the time to watch it. It's, it's important. And I think when you think about it, I think in so many different industries, we all have something that we can share. There's always something going on in our world today that, uh, that, that, that an expert can speak to. It doesn't matter whether it's a timely news story or something that's evergreen, but there's always something going on that an expert is, can speak to. And I think that's what we need to start kind of thinking about. You know, a lot of times people think, okay, I want to get on the news and I'm going to sell my book or sell my course or sell my class and sell my business. But that's not necessarily the way to go. You really want to go on and share information that of is value. literally of value. I mean, here's the thing. And this is what we think about. For example, 
Martha Stewart goes on the Today Show often and she does her recipes and she'll do little uh, uh, crafts and things like that. But we still go into the store and buy her stuff. Absolutely we yeah, do. Yeah, so we can't be afraid to go on our local news station and share our advice because when you are on television, there are so many different benefits that can come your way. Everything from the fact that you'll be able to charge a heck of a lot more money for your services just because people recognize you from TV. You know, yeah. it really increases your, your voice as an authority in your industry because you have that television footage. So if, if producers will trust that you'll come on and talk to a viewing audience of millions of people, then sure enough, people will want to pay you for what, what have you got to uh, offer. I love it. I heard you say several things that I want to follow up on. Sure. The first was you figured out this was a powerful vehicle for you and you invested a lot of time in getting what you were going to present polished and figuring out how to do it before you actually really got onto all the hundreds of TV shows that you've been on. Yeah, yeah, I did. I had to really figure it out. I had to figure out what my message was, who I, who I am in the space that I'm in. You know, when you think about being an etiquette professional, a lot of times people think, you know, you've got this ruler in your hand and you're gonna hit people in their hand and, and you know, you're very, very staunch. And Foster. I recognize, exactly. <laughs> and so, yes, I'm definitely, incredibly concerned about how I present myself to others. I'm incredibly, incredibly concerned about our world and how we all show up in the world and, and helping people to become really their best selves. That's important to me. But at the same time, I don't take myself that seriously either. I'm not going to look down my nose at people and, and point at them and tell them that they're doing things wrong. And that's one of the things that I think really resonated with the, with the, with the producers, which is what helps. So I went from local news to the Today Show to now I've had the pleasure of appearing on shows such as Dr. Oz, uh, uh, Access Hollywood, Inside Edition, TMZ, it, uh, CNN Headline News. I mean, whenever something goes wrong in the media now or somebody kind of misbehaves, I get that call to appear on television and it's, such, it's so, so great. The other thing you mentioned is you invested a lot of lead time in order to get onto these shows and that story gives the hope to people that they can do it themselves. And I love that you were persistent and I'm sure you were polite as you were doing it. I was, yeah, persistent is key, especially in this particular industry. More often than not, producers are very, very busy. Mm -hmm. And if they're not interested in whatever you've got to say at that moment, you're not even going to hear from them. They literally don't even respond right. to emails that you send to them. And so you have to just be persistent and say, okay, I've got a message, it's a great message, and I'm going to keep trying. So that's one thing that's really, really important. And then the other thing is to make sure that you really hone in on your own particular skill and your craft and your brand and figure out who you are in the space that you occupy. Because whether you're in real estate, whether you're an attorney, whether you're an accountant, Accountant. We all ha are, are, have our own little space that we occupy within that particular industry. And you have to figure out exactly who you are and what story you want to tell about yourself and your services. And it plays along those lines that you mentioned people should not be attempting to get on TV to sell things to people. That can be a byproduct of being the expert, the contributor, and figuring out your actual um, need that you're fulfilling and the value that you're providing over time that becomes what people who know you and follow you want is more of the content, more of the message that you're providing. And that's the thing that I think is important. We, the, too often we think, I don't want to share my information. I, I want them to pay me for this. Right. There are some things that you can give. Um, I heard someone call them, um, Free, uh, free, not freebies, but uh, I'll I'll think of the name in just uh, in just a moment. But you know, instead of a, uh, instead of giving something uh, to a person that's not of value, give some things that are of value. There's nothing wrong with giving some information away for free because then people say, okay, well, you know what? She's got she's got a point there, or he's got a point there, and he's sharing something that really resonates with me and that can make me ca can cause me to have a shift in my life. So we can't be afraid to give that stuff away. Right. Right, and it sounds like you're doing that every time you pick up the phone and you're asked for your opinion, you are giving away meaningful, relevant advice. Yeah, I am. And, and when you say pick up the phone, the thing that's really incredible about this is that 
now these television opportunities have now moved into uh, online and 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 print media and so forth so i'm literally interviewed anywhere from one to three times a week by major today i literally I just was it. interviewed by huffington post last I week it was it. new york post i mean i'm sorry the new york times it goes on and on and on and on and it solidifies me as an expert and a leader in my field i can't wait to hear more about this when we come back Stay tuned, we will be right back with more incredible etiquette tips from Elaine Swan, and we'll learn more about her journey. I'm Lindell Whirling, your host for The Finest Women in Real Estate. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius, and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lindell Whirling for The Finest Women in Real Estate. And we are delighted to have Elaine Swan, the nation's leading etiquette and lifestyle expert with us. And we're gonna talk to her about some tips that we can all implement in business etiquette. Elaine, thank you for joining us. Well, glad to be here. And yes, there are so many things. I mean, we could just run out a list. You know, we can pull out one of a CVS receipt of list, you know, of things of what people are making mistakes, but I'm here to help. So I know you are here to help. We can all learn from you. I feel that one of the things that etiquette does, as I've heard you say, and I've had the benefit of knowing you, is etiquette's about making other people feel at ease. Yes. I think it's also about making them feel special and appreciated. Yes, absolutely. That's one. The, and if we focus on that, then we'll take, we take it off of ourselves and, and start thinking about other people. And I think that's where we tend to make our mistake, is we're always thinking about what's going on in our own head. And it is difficult to get out of that and start thinking about other people and moving that frame of reference. We have to. It's important for us to do that most especially in business because we hear this often that people do business with with people they like and so if you're not likable I mean you can't show an individual that you're concerned about them and not be likable you know so that, that'll bring that'll keep business coming back I agree and I think some of that is out of sincerity and I think some of it is out of traditional things that we do to show appreciation like a thank you note oh my goodness thank you notes. so folks think that thank you notes are not fun right now but I mean you know it is so great to go to the mailbox and get some real mail that's actually addressed to us that's not uh, you know the flyers or, or, or you know junk mail. junk mail and that sort of thing but to get something in your hand open it and read it and see that it's handwritten really stands out now even more so than before and I think people are missing that point that's a golden little nugget secret that we should certainly be exercising people can use a text message or an email which feels very simple and fast they can do it verbally which I think is important as well or to your point, they can pull out a stamp, a yes. pen, and a paper. <laughs> can you share with us maybe when it's appropriate or inappropriate to use these different channels? Sure, in business most especially. So let's say, for example, someone gave you a referral and it really turned into something great and grand for you or your business, then this is when, in my opinion, a simple email is not necessarily enough. This True. is where you need to get pen and paper in hand and write Thank you to the person for giving you the referral and letting them know how well it impacted your business. So business referrals are a really great thing. Uh, let's say, for example, someone actually gives you something and, uh, you know, maybe you weren't, they weren't there when you opened it or when you received it. It could be, maybe they gave you a book. For example, I took a meeting with someone just a few weeks ago and he came to the meeting prepared to hand me this business book and he had signed it. It wasn't his book. He just signed it and said, Hey, I thought this would be a great book. And it surely was. And so in that instance, I said, yes, I said, thank you very much. 
while he was there. But because he went out of his way to bring this book to me, I don't know if he purchased it or if he got it off of his own shelf of, you know, the overflow of regifting. <laughs> Who knows? But it was valuable to me. So I made sure to send him a thank you card. And sure enough, when I saw him at the next networking event at the university, the first thing he the first thing he said when he saw me was thank you for the card. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's what it's about. He felt that you recognized his attempt yes. to make you feel special, and it sounds like the the reciprocal. It was reciprocal. Yes. Was. And so the first, so then, of course, from that, because he felt so good, he says, "You know what else have you got for me? What do I? I'm in this environment now. What do I need to do?" So I gave him a little tip, and the minute one of his colleagues walked up, he says. You need her to come in and work with your company, just like that. Perfect. Yes. And and it's about actually, in my opinion, when we're doing these things, because it was sincere, you felt something, you felt that he did something. So it's received both ways. People do business with people they like. Yes. And so I think this gentleman likes me in, the, in the proper way. <laughs> 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 and so, of course, so definitely, uh, if again, so if someone gives you something, it's really important to do that. And then, you know, a lot of times we will have somebody, for example, um, um, uh, s step in and, and do something as far as our business is concerned. You know, we all are doing things for one another, what have you. And so let's say, for example, you're super, super busy. You have a showing for a house and you can't show in that particular instance, but you're able to get someone to replace your moment at that, you know, replace yeah. you at that time. An email is nice to say thanks a bunch. A text message is okay, but a thank you card because that person really had some skin in the game and they saved you in that particular moment. That's another instance where you can send that thank you card. I agree. You're right. This is about effort and this is about recognizing it, appreciating it, showing gratitude. What are the right kinds of opportunities to use text messages? Because I feel like they're very fast. We can even use our phone and just say it. We don't even have to use our fingers to type it. Right. So text message is all right. So let's say, for example, maybe you went out to meet with someone and you had a really quick lunch or coffee date or something like that. You can shoot them a quick te text message okay. and say, you know, that was really great. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And it, I had a great time. Looking forward to see you next time. That's, a, that's okay as far as the text message is concerned. Now, if during that meeting they ended up giving you something or giving you a referral or sent, giving you some really super duper golden nugget, then that's when you take it a step further. And and so the idea here is the more important the interaction is or, or the more weighty it is, then that's where you kind of move it up a level. So you go from texting to an email to eventually the snail mail, a uh, handwritten <laughs> yes. note. Yes. I agree. And, you know, with email and texting, sometimes we're busy and I feel like maybe the email doesn't get seen, which would be a shame if you took the time. So probably erring on the side of up leveling yes. what your gratitude is, is a good idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another, another instance, I had a business meeting at a particular hotel in the San Diego area and the, the opportunity there was for an, to create an opportunity Great meeting, showed me around, everything's all, you know, was wonderful, but I made sure to send a card. So when she sat down with her team, she sent me an email and said, I'm sitting down with the team, we're going to go over what it would look like in partnering with you, and thank you for the card. It really made my day. That That's wonderful. All. Yes. It differentiates you, know? you as well. It does, and I was really sincere. I was so thankful that she took some time out to sit down with me and hear what I had to say. So I was really, really grateful, which is why I made sure to send a card. Can you share with our audience, what about generational? My parents are okay on email and text, but I know not everybody's parents maybe, or even some of us at my age, maybe are still expecting a thank you note. But if it's someone younger, going to somebody older, does that matter? If so, how? Sure. So we want to think about that, most especially with our younger generation. It's really important for our younger generation to recognize that they have to communicate with our uh, our older generation, the folks who are, you know, maybe baby boomers or, or early baby boomers, recognize that this is a form of communication that is important to them. Yes. So when we think about etiquette and doing what's right, it's not about what works for us, but you're True. really thinking about the other person and being considerate of them and the way they communicate. And so if they communicate more effectively through some sort of handwritten uh, correspondence, then by all means do so. Otherwise, you're going to get lost in the sauce. Right. And they may not know that you are attempting to thank them because they don't plug their phone in every day. Yeah. Yes, you know, exactly. They really know how to retrieve a text message or respond to it. Right, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of individuals who are not responding to text messages. They'll read it, but that's about as far as it goes. Yes, so we have a 
good tip from you in remembering to really be sincere, really knowing that you have to consider the effort that somebody put into it, step back, look at it from their perspective, and then also incorporate this generational gap because of technology taking over, but maybe not for others. Have I missed anything that our viewers sure. should know? Sure, yeah, there's one other thing that you can really do, and here's what's really unique about the, the, the handwritten note, and I'm, I'm going to share it since we're talking about this, is that's another chance for you to insert your brand into whatever it is, into, into that envelope. So yes. whatever ancillary product you have as far as your brand is concerned, that's an opportunity for you to insert, insert your brand in there and put it back in front of that person and bring it to their remembrance. So use that often. It's another form of differentiating yourself. And in business, you made two great points, being on brand, knowing your brand, and then making sure you're reinforcing it, but doing it in a sincere way that isn't self-serving. Exactly. So, for example, one of the things that I'll put inside the inside the envelope is a little card with a table setting on it. Now, I know I etiquette that. is not just about table setting, but it is something that many individuals either forget or they struggle with or they're not quite sure. And so I put a card in there, a little business That's card size plastic card in there. To, very so valuable. That, oh, yeah. I love it. Never I, gets thrown away. I do have one that you gave me and I have saved that and it is unique and it is special. So wonderful tip. And we are going to come back to you with a lot more information from Elaine that is so incredibly valuable. Thank you for sticking with us. We will be right back. I'm your host, Lindell Whirling, for The Finest Women in Real Estate. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm going to drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely going to call her right home. First time I tried biking and it was laying around my mom's house. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lindell Whirling, for The Finest Women in Real Estate. And I am just so happy that we have Elaine Swan here with us today. And we're going to focus on etiquette. Is it a lost art? And Elaine's Swan School of Protocol, could they save us from the lack of <laughs> etiquette that we might be experiencing? Well, well, well. Well, etiquette is definitely not a lost art. And the reason why I say lost is because there are employers, there are uh, business professionals, there are bosses, there are organizations, there are companies, there, uh, uh, there are corporations who expect people to show up properly. All right. So it's not lost in that sense. It is still expected. That's one thing. Good. And that's in the business world. And then, of course, in our personal lives, when you think about etiquette, a lot of times, as I said earlier, people think, oh, it's about your knife and fork at the table, but it's really not. I mean, it's in our communication, the way we communicate with one another, whether it's through email or text messaging, whether you're driving through down the parking lot and you want to cut someone off and, and, and what yeah. have you. You know, in our social lives, whether you're out networking as far as your business is concerned. So no, it's not lost. It's just a little hidden right now <laughs> because technology has really affected the way we communicate with one another. It's affected the way we carry ourselves and conduct ourselves in everyday life. And so with that being said, yes, there's a, definitely a need. There is a, some, some painful aspects that are, that are being experienced right now as far as lack of good manners, lack of protocol. And so that's where, yes, the Swan School of Protocol definitely comes into play. And I've been working at this for many, many years now, over 20 years, and I've really watched to see kind of how the industry has gone. And I got to a point to where I, I recognized that, you know, we need to be able to reach more people because I'm getting calls from all over the country, people saying, help me, you know, whether it's a university, whether it's an in, uh, you know, a lower level uh, grade school, whether it's a corporation that says our employees are not getting along with one another, yes. or we've got people who are going from the general employee pool into maybe the seat level at C-suite and they're not, they're, they need to be more polished, more sure. refined. So they need help. 
I'm only one person and I can only be in one place at a time. So again, it took me another two years to figure <laughs> out how to answer the call from all of these calls that I was getting from folks across the United States. And we launched a program about a year and a half ago, which is a licensing program. It's incredible. And so now what we do is we train individuals in the area of etiquette and professional development and give them their certification. And in addition to that, we license them. So this way they can operate as a Swan School of Protocol in their, in their city. And so since we launched our program, we now have 17 independently owned and operated Swan Schools throughout the United States. And we're still growing. We're still training folks and, and bringing them in so that this way we can really tap into those, the, the needs of the, of the folks throughout our country uh, who are, are, are hoping for someone to help come save, you know, their their staff or whatever yeah. it is yes that's exciting so you're an etiquette professional and an entrepreneur and a job creator and a cultural savior yes. and so <laughs> this is a wonderful program oh, thank you yes yes we're having such a ball doing it and the feedback that we're getting it's great because the job creation these women who are working they are making money they're making money in helping other individuals and then the folks that they're helping are just turning out better so we're really trying to take this thing and and kind of right the ship it's it's been we've been win, a little off here. yes uh -huh. it's been a little so we're trying to do some things here and I'm really excited about everything we're doing. Our show is about real estate and it's to help women and I think that in all of our business we could use more etiquette and especially in real estate for the buyers, for the sellers, these are big transactions, these are emotional transactions and having your tips like sending a thank you note, differentiating yourself, and really making sure that you're putting the other party at ease yes. all ties together so nicely with this etiquette message that you've been able to deliver. Absolutely, absolutely. Is, yeah. You know, my co the three core values that I, I share often are respect, honesty, and consideration. Those are the three core values. And so regardless of what industry you're in, whether it's in your personal life or even your professional life, if you look at those three core values and ask yourself in every instance, you know, which of these core values am I using? Which core value is very, very important in this instance? You'll practice great etiquette and great manners. Repeat those for our audience okay. so that we sure. have people <laughs> that don't have to rewind right. and so they can- Exactly, respect, honesty, and consideration. That's respect, honesty, and consideration. I'm gonna keep that top of mind. Yes. And I know that we can all do better. And with these tips, they're actionable. So thank you for sharing all of this with us. I'm so delighted that you were able to join us. Before we conclude today, I'd like to thank our sponsors and let all of you know where you can find us. We were sponsored today by the Fire Up Connect. And in order to find our shows 24 seven, you can find us on Twitter at the finest women in RE. You can find us on Amazon and on Roku. And we hope that you will join us again for some additional business and other types of tips that you can implement in your daily lives and in your professions. I'm Lindell Whirling, your host for the finest women in real estate. Thank you.